Hey everyone, before we get into the detail of what we're about to do to this car here in uh, Scott's Dreis lab, uh, I want to talk to you about something that's coming up. Uh, we're going to be doing something a little different uh, starting January 12th. It's going to run January through the end of February. Uh, the plan is to do a giveaway of the entry-level dry ice machine. And it's going to include several things. First, it's going to include a plane ticket here to go to dinner with Scott and I. We're going to bring you down to the Dreis lab, train you on the system. Um, we're going to give you a machine. Um, we're going to um, also set you up with a basic air compressor system to get your, uh, get your feet wet in dry ice cleaning. And the way that we're going to do that is uh, you could, you're going to be able to purchase, we're going to try this, digital entries on obsessedgarage.com. Every five bucks you spend gets an entry. I suspect you're gonna have very, very high odds of winning this. Whether you're an enthusiast like me in the garage, you're a professional detailer, um, or you want to start to get your feet wet in the into the world of dry ice cleaning and doing stuff like what we did to this car, or what you're about to see in this video, uh, we're about to uh, we're gonna we're gonna you know create this this giveaway path to try to hopefully create some buzz, get some more people understanding this, and get you a chance to get, this is now a $7,000 machine, uh, and then a several, you know, four, five, six thousand dollar desk and dryer, air compressor, get you all set up with all the equipment you need. So I just wanted to privy, privy you to that before uh, it comes up in a few weeks, uh, but be prepared. I'll make a dedicated video talking about all the details of it, but wanted to uh, let you know about that. We're excited for it, uh, but let's get into uh, dialing in this GT3 RS. It's going to be awesome. All right, everybody, welcome to Mount Dora, Florida. I'm at uh, Scott's uh, Dreis Nation Lab. Uh, this is the Dreis Lab. We're going to take apart the 997 giveaway GT3 RS and transform it over the course of the next couple of days. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to do a several videos on this. Uh, we're going to have Wabba's well, going to follow us around, do a long format vlog style of all the craziness. Uh, Scott and I are uh, cut from a similar cloth of crazy. Uh, so we're going to you know let you be a fly on the wall and sort of bring you along with all the different tech and all the cool stuff. There's the new ICS machines that we represent. Uh, we're going to show you those. We're going to show you the transformation of the of the GT3. It's just dirty enough that I think you're going to really enjoy this series. And then we'll probably make a condensed version of, you know, start to finish like an eight minute, you know, puff piece uh, on this process. So uh, come along with us for the next uh, two or three days as we tear apart this car and transform it. And we're going to show you all kinds of cool stuff. I'm going to show you uh, making dry ice. We're going to show you some sonic cabinets, some lifts, some all kinds of gadgets that Scott has. Scott has a lot of things that I don't have uh, to show you some, some interesting things like cleaning exhaust and all kinds of stuff that I don't know much about that I'm sure he's going to teach us about. So anyway, we're going to get the uh, car into position and uh, bring you along for the for the week. All right, so this is the equipment that we're using. This is like the ultimate setup, right? It so is. So you got a hundred something thousand dollars to... to this is a forty thousand dollar turnkey system. So the, the main element that we brought into the equation was the desk and dryer, which we now sell in the store. Mm -hmm. So that's the key to it. Like you, you, every item that you cut out of this and you can dig into it with us later, but every device and item that this system has, when you cut something, your performance and your ability to do the job mm -hmm. is going to be hurt. Gotcha. So yeah, you can like run the air right off the compressor and run it in the machine, but you're going to pay later. So by the way, by the way, I, I didn't mention this in the beginning of the video, you know, Scott consults and we place the machines through Obsessed Garage, so we can provide you all this stuff. We can... Yeah, there's no questions we can't answer. Right, right. So we can get you all this stuff if you want to do this or set up a business. But $40,000, three-phase, 40-horse, a Kaser, compressor. Kaser, rotary screw. Right, yeah. which goes to a wet Z tank. Correct. So this is a 250-gallon wet, wet tank. tank, which then goes into a... a our NDL 130 goes up to 177 CFM, which is good enough for us. Uh, this is the two cartridges in here. The air runs through the desiccant and dries the air to so negative 40. A desiccant dryer. Without this, you end up with big plumes of, of pretty, condensation. Pretty for videos, but ineffective if you want to see what you're doing. Right. 
Yeah. And then this then feeds what would be the tank that we're pulling from in right. the garage, which is a wet 250 gallon tank. Dry tank. Yeah. Or dry tank. Yeah, we refer to this as a dry tank. If you crack the valve in the bottom of this tank and it's got water in it, you, something's wrong. Gotcha. So we got filtration, you know, there's oil water separators and filtration, there's condensation management, and there's, you know, we make sure that the water going out of the building, out on the mm -hmm. sidewalk, is clean, so the EPA is not going to yell at us for having oil going outside. So there's nothing leaving here. So that's oil water. water separator back there? Correct. And then um, you have a few inline filters as well to yeah. filter out oil, right? So what operating pressures does this setup operate? So this is the biggest challenge in the educational process. The machines that we started with went up to 145 PSI. That's pretty doable with most compressed air systems. The machines that we're bringing to the market now, the 410S, mm -hmm. that's 232 PSI. That's okay. We don't need that in the automotive detailing side, but we're inventing the possibility of doing some very interesting things with that higher pressure. So mm. this is rated at 200. The piping is 200 PSI. Okay. So even if I had a bigger compressor, I couldn't do it. Okay. So it's rated 200 PSI. Remember, you always have a 20, at least 20 PSI swing between when your compressor loads and unloads. Okay. All right. You should always be able to go to your compressor if you're using it well as a rotary screw and see that the compressor has been under load 50% of the time. Mm -hmm. If you're 10, 20, 30% of the time under load, it's not good for a rotary compressor. You right, you're going to end up with water in the oil Correct. and you're going to be replacing the head, which is probably $10,000 once yet. every couple of year and a half or two years. So we have this set at 170. This is a 175 top PSI. Okay. We have it set at 170. Mm -hmm. Shuts off, well, it goes off load, comes back on load at 150, okay. right? So if I'm running that machine, the new IC030 Evo 2, mm -hmm. it goes up to 140, okay. I'm never going to be starved, right? So gotcha. if you run a 110, 120 PSI compressor, shuts off at 120, comes back on at 100, it's going to dip below 100 a little bit. Yeah. You're going to lose some performance. Doesn't mean you can't use the machine. Gotcha. That's the one thing about this machine that's new. I can literally run that machine with a pancake compressor. Okay. All right. Not very long. Right. <laughs> but you could run it down at 5, 10 PSI mm -hmm. and do super interior detail work. Got it. Okay. So what kind of performance do you want out of the machine dictates the compressor. This is basically, for the IC030, way overkill. A 20-horse okay. compressor would be plenty. Okay. So Half as big. So if you're looking into get, getting into this, this setup here is 70? It's rough? 40. 40,000. For, for the 40,000 for this whole setup. Yep. Well, that's not too bad. Yep. So you could be, say, you know, third less if you did a... Yes, absolutely. And we're, we're trying to create some solutions for people because this is like, what do I need? That's the first thing everybody mm -hmm. says. Mm -hmm. uh, so we work with a couple companies that can't get us to where we want to be. So we're just going to wait till we find someone who will. Yeah. Um, but that's that we want people to be able to have the best experience with a piece of equipment And so then you know that dictates a, a plus or minus 20 horse compressor I'm not against used compressors either. So this is a machine. We've been selling for a while. This is one I have this we call sort of the detail machine, yeah. right? Non particle size you, you can't select particle size. It's a two hose machine. So it has dry ice pulls through a Venturi effect Mm -hmm. through the gun so it comes from the hopper through this line and okay. then first comes in contact with the air here yep. versus a single hose machine which is the Evo 2 yep. where you drop the particle in the line at the machine so you got more performance. So on this car because we have the other I don't really need to use this. Well it, that is so versatile and when we get into some tough spots like the heavy, thick grease, or mm -hmm. that's going to do it. If you have a car with a lot of Cosmoline, that machine is 100%. So this is just under seven grand now. And then we have the 030, Evo 2, you're calling this, yep. right? So this machine we're going to be using here today, and Scott's going to get into the details in, in, in a minute here. But your airline, three inch lines? No, it's inch and a half. Inch and a half line running to a regulator, which is currently set at you know 150 PSI. Right. And the machine has a regulator on it, so obviously this is how you change your pressure. And this is the game changer part of it. This is the analog particle size, particle size and full size. So you, you, it's a it's a combination adjustment. 
And this sucker's eleven grand. Ten nine. It's, it's. I, I absolutely the, guarantee you we could sell this for twenty grand all day. Versus the old cold jet over there, forty. That's when I bought it. Now yeah. they're fifty fifty five fully equipped. Oh really? Sure. There's nothing that we can't do with this machine that that machine did. And then what is the big machine? We'll, we'll get in all these details yep. specifically as we make the individual product videos, but the big machine is, you, you don't have one here yet. It's on its way. It's actually landed in Tennessee this morning. It came okay. from France yesterday. It's a 410S. So the 410S is the one that just has capability to do higher pressures. Everything. It's the most versatile, high performance, low performance. Like if you want soft, you want hard, you want mm -hmm. high volume, you want high pressure, it's the machine and it's 25 grand fully equipped. Gotcha. It's a killer machine, 55 pound hopper, you know. So but could I run this shop off of this machine? Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's a fair question. Well, why would you want the bigger machine? So buy yourself a 20, you know, buy yourself a $20,000 compressor set up in this and you're you yeah. know, 30 G's in and you're making two, $300 an hour. Yeah, well that's, as everybody's experiencing in all trades, you know, those numbers are going up. This is a price insensitive service because you, you couldn't do it at all before. Right, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Scott's gonna dig into uh, re uh, refreshing a few little panels here and then we're gonna get me, the plan of here, this video series is to train me up to, uh, to be able to do this. You know, can we train me in a couple of days on how to restore this car? It'd be very similar to if you, you can come down here and train with Scott and yeah. get you set up for, uh, for your own business if you wanted to do this. This isn't really like DIY stuff. It's not, and, and that's why we created the community. You know, it's having the resource, if, if someone wants to do this as a business or at a higher level hobby, we right. have guys that are High, just, high level hobby, Yep. Um, a side to another like business, like a mechanic or a detailing mechanics business yep. or a dedicated career. You know, yeah, it's a dedicated and the dedicated option. career is like I'm. I'm really cautious about that because, you know, it's physically demanding, mm -hmm. and this isn't. You know, you're not. You know, thread needles here. I mean, this this is a demanding job, which is why we wanted. Like, you probably don't know, but we have three out of 94 Evos sold, three warranty claims, mm -hmm. and they were all hose related. Yeah. So these guys are 25 years in business in Bulletproof. Slovakia. Yeah. They know what they're doing. I mean, they really build a robust duty cycle machine. I mean, this is stainless steel. So what you can do is there's a Patreon group that Scott has put in place, and they get together regularly um, and discuss, you know, like what to do. Yeah, what, I mean, like this car comes in, you know, we've got guys that have done these cars. Yeah. And so, like, if you, you get a customer or you just bought one, you're like, hey, if you didn't know me mm -hmm. and you bought a dry ice machine, who, who do you turn to? Right. We have those people. Yeah, and so that group, you get together, you pay a few bucks a month, you get together yeah. and you can um, um, leverage research. each other's experience. Yeah, and we learn every day. why I hate two posts. Well, what he's about to do. To this is extra it. wide. If it wasn't extra wide, it'd be horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to take the wheels off first? Do we have to torque those wheels off? Yeah. So let's go ahead and put it back down on the ground, touching. No, no, no touching on these. Yeah, what's that? It has to be in the air. Oh, really? Yeah. How do you hold the wheel? You'll see. Magic. Oh. Forgot to bring the center lock tool thingy, the uh, guide. Yeah, we need that wheel hauler thing. That thing's great. Well, let's see. Did I leave it charged? Is it? What's the point if its frickin' battery's dead? Just move out of the way. I love this part. 
this tool makes me so happy. They, uh, the guy came to, to calibrate on Friday, Friday morning, but he didn't know how to do this one. So he drove all the way here from Tampa to calibrate this, but he didn't, like he didn't know what he was coming for. <laughs> so this is, you know, I get this all the time in videos. People are like, break the wheel on the ground, you know, on a, on a Porsche center lock per the Porsche manual. I think it has something to do with the, I don't know, maybe when you have some camber, it, you know, puts some, some odd torque on the thing, but you need to get the car in the air and then normally you'd have to hold the brake. So that, but this puppy makes it so that you don't have to. Here, go to those. So we go here, like that, I turn it on. I need to put it in reverse. Available at obsessedgarage.com. <laughs> That, that suits my temperament very well. So that's 442 foot-pounds that you would normally need a monster breaker bar for. That comes off in an instant. Oh yeah. That's the way we want to do it. And then because we're weak, weak, weak old men. Yeah, I. We will, I, we will use this fancy little machine to... When, when you've been laid down on the ground by your bad back a few times. Yeah, well, I had that a few months ago. <laughs> my, I like this thing, but I'm always afraid of it. So I go up and a little past and down. I need that. I need no them. carbon fiber chipping. <laughs> yeah. Stuck, but I got all new center lock nuts. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen it like that where when you take it off, it is completely clean. That leads me to believe I probably need to rebuild the center locks as well. Yeah, so this would be like a big project, right? If we had to use the big breaker bar and oh, yeah. up and down and all that, this, this tool makes it take seconds. Breaking the cardinal rule, never put your tools on the lift. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you get the car in the air, you're like, dang it, where did I put that thing? freaking bought this thing. I've taken off, well, the first eight bolts I took off, two were missing. One of the um, six was wrong. So I had like a 33% like a jank factor going on here. But we're gonna take the, taking the rear bumper off, the bumper cover off. One, because we can clean all this inside, and two, we'll get a better view of the transformation here. But look at the, look at the funk. It's like just funky enough to be a real fun project, but not so funky that we're gonna have to be here for two weeks cleaning the thing. I'm really excited for this. I'm gonna fall in love with this car. I mean, I kind of already have, but the combination of we're gonna end up, we're gonna rebuild the transmission. I'm gonna do the Dunham Dundon full uh, full Dundon package on this thing, combined with this full like super dialing in is gonna be amazing. It's gonna be awesome. I, I, this car just makes me smile. And it's gonna make me so even happier that like when I do get like a $350,000 like perfection one, and I just have to get it like to like 98, from 98% 98 to 100, this one's going from 50% to 
90%. I'm learning a lot. Just that immersion into the car, into the model, into the platform, yeah. is impossible to do. Not impossible, but unlikely. You're not likely to do it unless you have it and your hands on it. So I'm, I'm going in deep on this sucker. We're going to take darn near every nut and bolt off of this thing and put it back together again. That thing is $800, and it's been so helpful to learn about how these nozzles affect. So that was like 54 CFM. You put this nozzle on there, so you lose 10%. 10% of CFM just by the restriction of the nozzle. You see how cold that's getting from the desiccant dryer. So I'm gonna fill this all the way because I know there's gonna be some time in between when we're not gonna be using it. And I actually wanna try to stress it to see if I can plug it. When the ice sits in there with clumps like this, I want to leave those. It's the most challenging thing for a dry ice machine. So the IC030 is a, is a pretty interesting situation. We, we call it the Evo 2. <clears throat> it's the first machine that was actually designed with the help of automotive dry ice cleaners. So our Dreis Nation people, we've got about 60 plus members now. Um, over the course of 13, 14 months, we worked with ICS, because they're the only company that was, at the time, interested in understanding what the automotive dry ice cleaners would want. And so through our efforts of using more expensive and more elaborate and complicated machines, our desire was to go back to analogs. Quite simply, <clears throat> there are basically two options this side of the dial changes the volume when you want crushed dry ice, smaller particles. If you want full size particles, you'd go to the other side and choose the volume one through six. We haven't done the experiments to see how many pounds per minute each of these numbers represent, but we'll do that in coordination with the CFM flow and the size or choice of nozzles, and we'll dial all that in so people can start to have some understanding. It's 140 PSI top range. And the real important part to understand is, versus the Evo 1, this is a single hose dry ice machine. And so a two hose dry ice machine, like here over in the Evo, Evo 1, basically this is a siphon this is the product, the dry ice comes up to the gun, and as the air goes past, it's a venturi effect and pulls the dry ice through the gun. Well, that's effective, and it's, it's where the dry ice machines started in the 40s, but it's, it doesn't give you the same force and power as if you would drop the dry ice into the airline at the machine, which is what the Evo 2 does. So, you know, we, we had to prove to ICS that there was a market. We sold uh, about 100 of these machines in the last 13, 14 months. And through a combination of some luck in lower euro to dollar rates and volume production and selling so many, because our, uh, well, let's just say collectively, the ICS community um, has made enough of an impact in social media. I, I would have to argue that Obsessed Garage, being the first to come to the scene, has helped them grow in their volume. Well, with volume production comes cost savings. So now this is 6,900 instead of 10 grand where we started, and the Evo 2 is 10,900. So it, it's, a, it's a really exciting time for us to finally bring an automotive designed machine to the automotive space that's cost effective, and it actually can run on very small compressors. What's the downside if you have a very small compressor? Well, you can't get quite as much performance. But if you want to upgrade down the road, you don't have to change anything in the machine. You just get more compressor. More, more power gives you more performance. So the machine weighs about 100 pounds. It moves easily around the shop on the wheels, four wheels. Uh, this, is a, this is the only prototype in the world. Production starts in February. 
Um, I think we've got a pretty good backlog of pre-orders already. Matt's working away there. I don't want to shoot him in the legs, but we're going to play around with this a little bit. Um, I'm going to go some, to some really fine particle size, low pressure, and blow some leaves out of the front bumper. So as opposed to the EVO 1, you get these 1.5 millimeter particles bouncing off of you. There's enough force here and the particles are smaller. You, you don't get any moisture. It's just, it's almost more magical than any machine that I've ever run before. It's pretty crazy. A lot Dude. of fun. You know, don't be confused. You know, dry ice cleaning is very much like pressure washing in that you can take the, the large particles off, but there's still a film left unless you've got cosmoline on the car. So the cosmoline preserves the perfect original new finish underneath. So if you take cosmoline off, you don't have to touch it. I mean, you can eat off of it. But when you're cleaning something like this that's been clean before and you're getting the big stuff off, the last thing you'll do after dry ice cleaning it it's just a mist it with a product that we like to use. It's Black Magic Bleach White, white eraser and a microfiber. And it, it, it's satisfying because you've got all the tar, the bugs, the brake gunk off. It's, it's over here, Mike, let's see what this does. So this is the original paint of the car. This is a repaint that was done over. So if I turn the pressure up, volume, that black stuff's gonna come off. So you also notice the machine's not super loud. It's not, you know, ear plugging it and going crazy. So it's, this, I think this is gonna be spectacular. You know, for every person that's like, oh, I could do the same thing with water and soap and brushes. I mean, you're taking a, a part that some people would say, I gotta replace this, and just making it look new again. Matt, check this out. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> I was watching. I mean, there's a whole opportunity here to just buy dirty parts, clean them, and put them back on the, online for sale. I mean, it's... Uh, three years now, it doesn't get old. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's... Crazy. <laughs> wow. 
Imagine you ran like a 24 hour thing in your shop where you've hired a couple young guys to go out to junkyards, no, find parts, and build an eBay business. It's like when you're not cleaning car, then you end up buying more machines. It's crazy. I mean, you, you, you just. That's, that's like a $70 part, you know? And yeah. Just... And, and to do that to it, you know, you're, you're back to spec. All right, so here we got decals, right? So we want to be careful of the decals. So I might go down just a little bit more and pressure. Brand new part. No harm to the decals, no harm to the piece. It's just, that's, that's, man, when you can clean cars and parts that way, look at that thing. Yep. Freaking awesome. All I gotta do is polish the lens and we're good. Right? I just love having all, even though you'll never see this part, it's, I just, I'll just know. <laughs> Man, if you've ever tried to take glue off, you know how satisfying that is. So now what we can do is we could actually go up in pressure. We're not having any issues with any denting or anything. We can go up in pressure, up in volume, move the gun further away and do some broader area cleaning and then come back to it and do the fine tune stuff. Like see there's a piece right here. You can just dial in on that and just eat it away. So we're just trying to experiment to see what's the best process and not shotgun and just go crazy on it with a big machine and dent it and ruin the piece. You know, you can see where we can, we can spend a little extra time and preserve a super valuable part. Like what if this is irreplaceable? What if you couldn't buy this again? You know, this is the whole thing about preservation over restoration that is so critical about dry ice. This is a uh, yank and tug type of car. A, uh, medium jank. Okay, let's get this one off. So removing all these panels is what you do to get to the guts, right? Yeah. But this means that most of this car is really just going to be a quick dusting. Most of our work is going to be in the engine, in the bay. Yeah. engine bay and the uh, fender wells. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, we've got the car prepped and ready. And now we need to just have a little fundamentals training. Okay. We've got to help you understand, because it's, it's, it's not about us to train you so that you can shoot par day mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. It's about teaching you the fundamentals so that you can think while you're shooting to make the decisions on the adjustments of distance, pressure, size, you know, everything that you need to know, changing nozzles out. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we like to be able to show you the CFM flow meter while you're working and you, you, you have a whole different appreciation for how the equipment works when you can actually see the meter on the CFM, the pressure on the line, the pressure on the machine, that all will come together. But the fundamentals, it's just critical. You, you, you gotta, there's a process by efficiency of how we start the car, but we're gonna go to the whiteboard and we're gonna spend just a few minutes talking yeah. about some of those basics. Cool. And it'll, it'll come, you know, it's like, you can't go too crazy because it's overload, right? Yeah, okay. So let's go to the whiteboard and learn how to do this. Yeah, cool. So, color half of that in. 
Okay, so what I would do is I would make a line down the middle and I would kind of go like this. So that's how I would do it. Okay. So I'm not going to torture you with the whole, my whole half over here. So the benefit of this when you're dry ice cleaning is consistency and the further away you get from the car, you'll start seeing every spot where you stopped. Mm -hmm. So every time you go here and stop and go here and stop and here and stop, this, just like painting, gets a double shot. Okay. That can be problematic on sensitive cars. So if you have an undercoating that's a little tricky mm -hmm. or you have the drifted in overspray like your E36 yeah. and you don't have a smooth, consistent path, you, you could see like a chunk of dirt right in here and as you went past it, maybe it didn't come off. You don't stop and go eh, and then move on. You're like, oh shoot, it didn't come off. I got to come back again. Hit it a little closer, back away. A little closer but you want to keep the consistency so then what do you do on the edges this is why i'm constantly moving in a lot of ways so there's never a dedicated spot mm -hmm. right or you're moving and you flip it flip it flip it so it can't concentrate in that one section your car's not going to be that it's not going to be a problem mm -hmm. but there are a lot of cars in this building and, and that we've done because if you're you're doing it this way, the concept would be you get like a different finish. Yeah, like it it's would just be. gonna be blotchy looking. If you see the amateur dry ice guys, you just go out and buy a machine and go to town. Mm -hmm. God bless them, you know. Um, you see a blotchy end result on a lot of their work, and they can't figure out what's wrong. So there's there's two issues. That's issue number one. Okay. And issue number two, as we talked about earlier, you're not gonna get all the dirt off with just dry ice. Right. It's dry ice and some hand work. Gotcha. You got to get that white eraser out, mist the underside. We're going to do that in your car. We're going to mist it. We're going to take that dry the white eraser very lightly and then just wipe it off with a microfiber. And you actually can blend. You'll be shocked how much dirt comes off. Right. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, if you've got surface of a car and the Cosmoline sprayer, for instance, there's none in your car, spray this section. Right. And this is like a a-arm, right? If this got covered with cosmoline and this did not, when you spray the cosmoline off with dry ice here, this part of the A-arm, is, is, is the lower control arm, is perfect. Mm -hmm. There's no dirt on it. You could just, you know, nothing, white glove. This, you're going to have to clean by hand. So there's always a blending process when you're finished and you're able to, you know, get back and look at it from a distance to try to to get that next level. So then the argument is, oh my gosh, you spent all this time cleaning this car and then we're well, gonna go out and get it dirty again. Once you've got it that level clean, just like you do the top side, mm -hmm. it's that much easier to touch it up. Yeah. You've gotten all the junk off. Right. So distance is your friend always. So you always start, if I'm gonna spray here, I'm not gonna start right here. I might end up there depending on my circumstance, mm -hmm. but you're always shooting from a distance. Huh. and working your way in with motion, and then you're looking for a pattern. It, it can't be said enough if you're trying to clean this area or this. You would start from a distance and come in, and as you're moving, you might come closer, closer each time to gauge the effect that you're trying to have, mm -hmm. but you don't stop. If you stop, you have high risk. And the last thing I'll share with you is fan tip. versus the round nozzles, right? Yeah. So a round nozzle is gonna have a pattern that's actually going to be more concentrated here, right? The center of the stream is gonna be more concentrated than the outer extremities. Yeah. If you shoot a round nozzle here, it's gonna be super clean in the middle 
and graduated cleaning toward the outer edges. The fan nozzle is going to be very direct, full width. Sometimes that can be a detriment because there's concentration where? Right here and right there. Because the particles are, are coming through here, right? And they're hitting this edge and it's redirecting them. So a lot of the particles concentrate here and here and this is broader. So that can create streaks. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason why we were careful about the effect to try to decide, do I want to use a fan nozzle or do I want to use something that's got, you know, think about a balloon touching this, right? So as the balloon touches, the center concentration is here. And then as you push harder, there's more of a pattern. But if I just take this, Mm -hmm. The whole width hits pretty consistently. So you got to make a decision, you know, what do you want the effect to be on the surface when you're doing open alloy, metals, super strong ceramic coated things, you know, that's, you can go crazy. You can turn up the volume, turn up the pressure, and you can take advantage of the performance of the machine and to on, speed the process. And up. on that, you would do flat? Uh, you would do this because it's you, you. You're not worried about that center part being super crazy. Gotcha. Okay. Right. So when you're doing the the trans and you're doing the exhaust and areas like that, you concentrated. Would do this the, the, there's two nozzles that come with the Evo two. So this is going to be on fender liners mm -hmm. and plastics and stuff like that generally. Yeah, it's the softer thing. You know, anything like we'll go inside painted surfaces. You want the vents inside the car, like all yeah. this. That, that's going to be the softest application right, of the machine. Okay. It's softer than any machine that I've ever seen or run ever. It's wacky soft, Got and it. that's super helpful in a lot of ways. Okay. So, distance is your friend. Distance is your. I mean, that's like the we harp on that all the time. Distance is your friend. Everything else is obviously just a matter of experience and time. So, you know, once people have the fundamentals, you know, you can spend two days at the professional golf school and you can get better over time, but mm -hmm. you're not going to be at the highest level in three, day three. Got it. Your car is a great car to, to learn on. It's fabulous. Cool. Yeah. This is pretty nifty. I feel like I'm going, uh, Lunar going to a fancy factory or something. <laughs> Wait till we get the helmet on you. <laughs> oh, shoot. I've been compromised. I've been compromised. <laughs> we got tape. <laughs> You'll survive that. <laughs> I'm going to be a few belt buckles lighter than this in uh, a few weeks. All right. If you're going to make it bigger, let me know. Yeah, oh. it needs to go a lot bigger. A lot bigger, okay. You got some big fat heads wearing this thing. Is that high enough? You got Chris Haynes down here wearing <laughs> this thing. All right, let me make sure I get these in a little bit here. Okay. All right, so now let's get you hooked up here. This is legit. Oh, here, let's pull this, down. pull this microphone down, sorry. Yeah, you ain't getting dirty, bro. This is how I feel when you go snowboarding. So I always want to come at straight, right? Perpendicular is strongest, so you do what you can here, then you can stand up and we'll do from the side. Got it. Just want to see so let's see if a pattern from further away will be as, as effective. I want a bigger pattern, so I'm gonna turn it up. 
more volume and more pressure. Okay. Okay, try that now. I'm already hurt. <laughs> it's like his shoulders. <laughs> um, I'm like an old here, man. Stand up. All that dirt from just that? Oh, yeah, there we go. All right, where was I? Over here. Like, look at this here. That's awesome. This is a lot harder than it looks. So, man, this would take a while, learning curve-wise, to figure out how to sit and just how to be. Everything. Um, yeah. Like my shoulder, and I'm in reasonably, even though I'm chubby, I'm pretty fit. And like, I'm like, darn shoulders, I don't know, I'm freaking eight minutes in, I'm ready to quit. <laughs> so, um, how do you stay organized? Like, I feel like I'm just running around all over the place. So, you, as we talked about earlier, you go after the worst stuff first, and you think through how it's going to fly, right? Because mm -hmm. cleaning is moving dirt from one place to another. Right. So you got to get the wet, oily, greasy stuff off first, and then chase to the outer extremities. It is, it's daunting to start a car because you feel like, oh my gosh, this is the part that people don't get. Why does it, why does it take 15, 20 hours? Well, if you... If you take every surface that you're going to clean on the underside of that car and you, you made it all flat, mm -hmm. it's a huge area. Yeah. People view the underside of the car as just a you know, six foot wide, 12 feet long, mm -hmm. no big deal. You know, just, you know, how, why, did that, why did that take you so long? Every intricate part has got to be cleaned from all angles, and then there is a scenario where you have grease or oil or something wet, that's going to mm -hmm. spray and hit things you've already cleaned or you're about to clean. So you do chase it for a while. Yeah. And that's what takes time. So then when people say, well, how much does it clean? To, how much to clean my car? Well, what are your expectations? Yeah. How far do you want me to chase this? How far do you want me to go? Yeah, I mean, it's, I can already tell it's very different than... Um, to like to get my to like my E36 like what you did on that um, for for to to get to that like I could see like there's what I'm getting at there's YouTube clean and there's real clean just like there's YouTube nice cars and there's real nice cars yeah. uh, and so I can see how I don't know just in my first few minutes I don't know that I could without you I don't know that I could get to my car to where I need it to be it would take some serious practice it does. It Just does. like, you know, I could teach someone how to polish, but they're not going to get nearly as good of a result without the time, time, of, out. time in the machine, yeah. Yeah, and there's and a... I, uh, I did a little quick little wackaroo on the, um, on, the, on the sway bar, and I took a little paint off. So, you know, I would have to take into consideration because we had it set for the aluminum. Correct. I'm like, let me just hit this, and a little, little paint came off. <laughs> so you'd have to manage your... Especially like when I get into the fender wells and stuff, like manage the pressure. Be processing. There's a lot more processing that's going to go into this than I was intending when I was thinking. But I, I do think it's pretty learnable. I mean, it is. Yeah. I'm eight minutes in, so. Yeah.
You, I mean, you can see that that constant motion is your benefit. And when you got something that doesn't want to come off first pass, mm -hmm. it's better to leave it yeah. and let it warm up again and come back. It doesn't take but 10, 15 seconds. Yeah. It's more effective if it doesn't come off to leave, do something else, come back to that area, and that freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw mm -hmm. process you know, makes a big difference. Gosh, this is gonna look beautiful when I have a new exhaust after this is all clean. Well, the, the crappy suspension. part about it is with two to two and a half hours, this exhaust will look better than it did when it was new when we're done with it. Not with dry ice, partially with dry ice. Yeah. But with our passivation process. And I, I, mean, I get that you're putting a new exhaust on it, but. We're gonna do it just to show you what yeah, can be done. Yeah, just to see what can be done, yeah. Definitely, Porsche Classic Center, you know, they're buying the first 410S. Mm -hmm. Bought it. is I under here? Not many. Yeah, feels like a hundred. <laughs> I started at like 11.30. Three, so you probably got three hours. Oh yeah, that was, that was a decent amount of time. So the transmission was the, that means it's probably leaking somewhere. So it'd be a good thing we're rebuilding it. But all this transmission goop ends up everywhere else. You, know, you can see <laughs> the uh, filth I got going here. So. Once I, I just finished up the rear, so once I get, I'm gonna do this axle, get up, up from the underside, then like the whole rear section of the car looks pretty good other than, you know, hand work wiping down, right? Yeah. And then this, this running up front here will be more of a... This is, this is like dust a because half an hour all, on either side. This is all covered. And then I'll spend time on each wheel well. Yeah, I think I might be here all week. <laughs> you want to uh, you want to play with the TIG brush for the rest of the day for the next hour, just so you can see, be inspired. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Do that. Oh, Get this thing off of me. No, he's never seen it. All right, Scott's got some new uh, newfangled way to newfangled way to um, clean exhaust. Next level. So we've been showing you, showed you how to do it with OSFO. Scott taught me that trick. Now this is the new trick, which costs how much? Well, it's around four to five grand. That's not too, not terrible. I thought it was more than that. No, and it's called passivation. It's called passivation. Okay. You're basically removing, just like OSFO, you're taking the carbon off the surface. So it's the same, it's a little, just a little more potent than OSFO. Um, that's phosph phosphoric acid. Oh, so this is still using acid. Mm-hmm. Where is the acid coming from? Right there. Oh, okay. Okay, and he took my power up yet? No, he did not. He did not. Oh, I missed this spot. I gotta clean these, clean this, clean up in there. Jeez, all I can see is more that I need to do. More what? I just see more stuff I need to do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, that, is a, uh, that is a fact. Always. Sorry, so what is this thing called? This is called the TIG brush. So we're one cleaning. Hold on. Just dip it in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what is happening here? What is it <laughs> it's magic. It's, I, I, what, why do I have to explain it? I can't. So it's, it's heating, so it's, no, super heating? No, it's a, some kind of electric charge. This is a carbon fiber brush. Oh, okay. Right? And it's, even this darker stuff, It's 
It's like multiple applications, but. You're taking the carbon off the surface. Mm -hmm. This is doing it more effectively than trying to do it with OSPO. Yeah. And what's really cool about it is, let's see here. Because OSPO would only do like we got a tenth of that. Work at it, yeah. I'm gonna see. Yeah. It'll hang here. First thing you do is spray with water. Whoa. <laughs> and then oh, the, man. This. So you disconnected the battery so you don't, don't nuke fry the whole, it. Yeah. yeah. The last thing you do is hit it again with water. And that neutralizes the phosphoric acid. Yeah. Well, keep going. What are you okay. doing? Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and so if you don't get the tar and everything off with dry ice, that impedes your progress, right? You gotta make sure you get all the solids off the surface. So what's the wear and, I mean, those brushes wear out pretty quickly or? They do, I like this car will take two or three brushes and they're not cheap. I forgot what they cost, but given the fact that like dry ice, there's no alternative, what is, you know, it's hard to really complain about the price. There are competitors, but we researched all the different models out there. This guy's got a patent on the carbon fiber brush aspect of it. When you're first starting to do it, you, it's easy to get rambunctious and you can kind of tell the guys that don't have patience that have bought the machine and use it because they just won't chase it long enough. It looks better, but it doesn't look perfect and you can make it look perfect. Yeah, perfect is, uh, you can kind of see it coming out there. What happens if you touch the end of this? You Nothing. You electrocute yourself? No. But, you know, you could set new precedents, maybe. <laughs> so just make sure to not use the side of the brush it's, it's a little funky because the brush wants to fold over super easy. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be dedicated so on this. What do I do, just turn it on now? No, you don't do nothing, just go touch the metal. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> and hold this one here so I catch that. Oh, gotcha. That's, so that's what you don't wanna do. Here, watch. Oh. All right, and so it's. Oh, I see. And if you it starts to fold over, then you know, make it not fold over. Just the, gotcha. just the tips, yeah, like that. I see. It takes a little getting used to. Slower and, yeah, there you go. Right, yeah. And then I use this too. I'll stick the brush in there and swirl it around the middle to form it. Hmm, you've always got some sort of old man trick, huh? <laughs> As you will learn, it will happen to you too. <laughs> and the satisfaction meter, to me, it ranks high. It just looks like you're having fun. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's like what a six-year-old would like to do, but you won't let him. <laughs> I've got plenty of patience. I'd sit here all day, right? <laughs> What's the especially, especially when the results are that way, right? What's the downside here? Nothing. You waste your time sitting here. There's oh. no wasting. There's no such thing as here. <laughs> All right. And then we'll clear again. Water.
I mean, you can see where we're going here. <laughs> yeah. So when people say, oh, I'm gonna replace the exhaust, I'm like, mm, sure, I mean, really? I mean, for performance and sound, uh, okay, I can go along with that, but I, I yeah. promise you, two to three hours, that entire exhaust system is gonna look like that. Yeah. And it protects it too. And it's not gonna come back like that Isn't as that quick juice? because it's taking the carbon off the surface. There's not a Porsche guy that wouldn't want his exhaust system to look like this. You can't tell me that someone's not going to be thrilled to have you do this. This is a 12-year-old exhaust. It's seen like 30, high miles. heat. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like it's been heat cycled to like max red line for right. hours <laughs> on the track. Yeah, I mean, these right off the, you know, from the factory don't look like this. Nope. Like if you bought a brand new one, forget it. Do not put your TIG brush down for the day without rinsing it. Mm, no. That is the kiss of death. I fought for an hour to get this thing off one day because I did that. Oh. <laughs> It'll corrode. It's just going to sit there and eat. And then the problem is you got to chase the threads the threads inside get bad and then they don't conduct the electricity and then it doesn't work. All right, so that's a wrap for uh, day one. We got the car disassembled, put on a lift, um, all the panels and rear off. Uh, I uh, got a good portion of the rear section done, the uh, initial cleaning. We played with the, uh, whatever that thing's called, the, uh, the TIG brush. And uh, so tomorrow we'll get really into detailing of the, you know, hitting all of this stuff and just, you know, finishing the rear. I think we could probably finish the lion's share of the car tomorrow since we won't have any real prep. Uh, and then Thursday will be some of the detail of the interior and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, this is fun. This is a lot of fun. It's a really messy process. And um, I picked it up pretty quickly, you know, about doing you know, moving, you know, maneuvering the machine. It's like you teach someone to polish, you know, you don't generally get it quite right away. It's very similar. And I'm sure there's lots of little tweaks that you learn as you screw stuff up that uh, Scott can, uh, can preview me to. So we'll see you tomorrow and uh, we'll keep working through it. This car is going to be amazing when it's done. I'm excited. <laughs>